Hi, this is Tom Blodgett from Genda Industries, and today we're going to continue our series of stropping uh, with the third video of actually how to strop. So I've got kitchen knives, a folder blade, I've got a chisel and a straight razor, all which can be stropped using slightly different techniques. This is a third in a series of stropping videos that we're doing. I'll probably find a playlist up here. So before we begin, please like and subscribe and leave some comments if you like the videos. Uh, so let's get to it. All right, so before we actually strop, I want to talk about some things to consider. Uh, the first being pressure. A lot of guys put a lot of pressure. Uh, I'm of the camp where less pressure is better, and it really depends on how you approach it as to which might be better for you. So uh, before uh, I strop anything, leather in itself is compressible. Our agenda strops are two millimeters thick. So that means that if we press down on these enough, there's gonna be some compression on that. So you have two millimeters. Uh, others might be five mil thick or, or four mil or, or even smaller or thicker. It depends on the thickness and the suppleness of the leather as to how much compression you can achieve. So with that said, it will wrap around the blade to a certain extent, which is why you generally wanna come in at a lower angle than your actual sharpening angle. After compression, comes the issue of uh, pressure and what it does to the edge. Generally speaking, it will roll an edge if you put too much pressure. And that is bad for the blade because you're gonna fatigue the metal as it rolls over, you're stretching it, and that can fatigue the edge. So too much pressure could be bad. Uh, however, if you are with a blade that has less um, refinement, you can generally put more pressure. So a, a typical blade is gonna be a 220 and like a buff, 220 grit belt, and a buff is your typical sort of stock edge. So there you could put more pressure because there's more strength behind the edge, theoretically. So it won't roll as easily. But if you're gonna get up to a very refined edge that's sharp to say 8K or 10K uh, on stones or whatever, then you have a really thinner edge and that will then roll much more readily. So, by, so the pressure that you put on there is going to need to change depending on how thick your edge is actually going to be. So the next thing is how many strokes should you be doing? And there's two schools of thought on that. I'm of the school where you would do less, uh, but there's others, of course, that would say do more. And the divide really becomes, I think, between how refined your edge is before you start stropping. If you're doing like a 220 and a buff or a coarser uh, edge, then there's less influence that the strop actually has over the shape and the changes that it imparts onto that edge. It's just not, it's, it's a strop. It's not as aggressive as a stone or a belt. So you would have to do a lot more stropping strokes in order for it to really change things. Uh, but if you're coming off, say again, a 10K or more refined edge, then the influence is much greater, uh, much faster. So then you would do fewer strokes because there's not as much to get in the way of. It's already prepped for it. So those are the three things to consider as you're going through your stropping schooling, if you will. Uh, the amount of compression that is being imparted, how much pressure you wanna add and the influence it's gonna have, and how many strokes that you really do need to do. And this is something that everyone's gonna have to do for different things. Straight razors versus knives versus kitchen knives uh, are all gonna require different things depending on whatever each one is doing in its sharpening progression. So in the other videos, we talked about the, the, the stropping of the first thing being compression, then pressure, and then how many strokes. So these are the things that are always supposed to be going through your mind uh, when you're stropping something. So I'm gonna start off with a straight razor. The thing about a straight razor is that it's really thin. Hopefully the camera's picking up just how thin that is. And you always get that little, you know, shing. You know, that's super thin. Uh, and there's a lot of flexibility actually to straight razors that most people don't realize. So when you're stropping this, if you were to put more pressure, you're actually gonna bend the whole blade, the whole, uh, not just the bevel, but the whole thing. And then you risk rolling the blade through compression uh, and pressure on top of that. Plus too many, stro uh, too many strokes then you are you know, at a really, really thin edge compared to something uh, like a hunting knife, which has four or five mils thick or a quarter inch. Uh, so again, pressure on a straight is, should be minimal at best. When you're stropping, really just gonna do more pinkies up. Uh, no pressure whatsoever, just the weight of the blade. And you can talk to other straight razor guys and they'll you know, guide you through some of this. But we're doing, again, edge trailing. All right. And I'm really not putting any pressure because all I'm trying to do at this point, especially with quarter micron, is to align the edge. So I'm not really trying to sharpen anymore because I've done the stones, 
uh, and I've gotten my edge up to a very high level of, of refinement. So all I'm doing now is five or ten of these to get the edge nice and straight so it cuts the hair and also just slightly more refined. I'm not trying to do any more work to it. And you can hear how very, you know, no sound. So very, very light. Again, pinkies up. You have to get that pressure uh, learned because a lot of guys are, are heavy handed to begin with. And then as a lesson, it's a plateau thing. You'll lessen pressure, get used to it, and then lessen some more, and then lessen some more until you, know, you almost drop the blade. So just like that. Okay, all right, so we're gonna start with a, uh, a folding blade here. I've got a, a Tuya knife, a Chicane S35V. So what we've got here is again, a, a thick blade. We've got about, um, not quite a quarter inch, a little less. We have a nice curvature to the blade. We have some heft to it. It's a little thicker. It's got a nice flat grind. So what we're going to do here is we have a couple options. If I came off a, a coarser uh, finish before, like a, a 220 and a buff, as we explained before, then I could put more pressure because this quarter micron especially is not going to impact the edge as fast as if this were much thinner or more refined. So in this case, uh, this is more of a factory edge here, so I'm assuming it's a 220-ish and a buff. So I can put more pressure. I'm, a, again, of the camp where I'd rather put less and just do more strokes, but you can, you know, up to you here. But again, with the idea that you know what you're doing. So here I've got a little bit more pressure. And I can hear that there's quite a bit of uh, putting a little bit more pressure and I'm actually trying to match the angle. I'm not so much trying to come down below the angle. One of the things you can do as well is if you're going to strop and we've in the first video, again, finding your angle, sorry, the second video, finding your angle, uh, you can actually put a micro bevel on there. So if you're pretty sharp and you just want to make sure there's no burr or anything, you can actually come in and set your normal angle, raise it up slightly higher and you put a little micro bevel on there. Again, there you wouldn't want to use a lot of pressure because that would have a faster influence. So if, as long as you're aware of, of those three things about uh, pressure and compressibility and how many strokes you want to do, then you can make your own formula essentially. So, so with doing a pocket knife, you can put a little bit more pressure because there's a little more meat there to work with. Uh, and you can generally, there's, it doesn't have as much effect at one time. I don't really think you should really put a lot of force uh, but if it's really raw and you really want to get to it, then you can and you can bring it back to life. Uh, but generally speaking, you're just going to be touching up with this and making sure that the edge is straight. All right, next up we have a chisel. So on the strop here, again, depending on what you're using before to sharpen it, a lot of guys will use some mechanized and it's not terribly sharp or refined and they'll come off a leather belt. Again, 220 and a buff is essentially what it is. Or other guys will take it to stones and bring it up to the next level uh, and then finish with the strop. So this has been done on more of a coarse version. Uh, so we're just finding our angle. And here, you don't want to be below the angle because you can actually feel it just sliding across, like my bevel, it don't, it's doing nothing. You want to actually pull up till you get a, a tactile feedback. And that'll take, just go slow and you slowly raise the angle up until I can feel it catch and I feel like a little scrape that's right where I want to be. That's the edge. And don't go past that. So right there. And that's my edge. Again, pressure if you want or not, because this is a much more robust angle, generally 35 degrees. Um, so, and on the flat side, of course, I'm just going to wipe that down. And that removes a lot of the burr. So again, find the angle, and then you're just going to pull back. How much pressure you want to put is up to you. Again, the compressibility uh, and how much refinement you have and how many strokes you plan on doing. Again, the formula. And I actually put a lot of pressure. I put more pressure on, on a flat grind like this or even a hollow ground on a plane. Uh, I actually tend to be more pressure on the flat because I want it to nice and come up and just really get rid of any burr or minimal burr that's there and really just force everything forward. And then I'm lighter on my bevel side because I just want to tickle that and then get a nice edge so it's nice and flat here and it's facing forward so when I go to cut something it's it's no problem it just cuts right in
All right, and now we have a Maestro U uh, D4 vegetable cleaver, Asian style. Uh, this is uh, a thinner knife, just a long body to it, uh, a wide body, but it's pretty thin. It's about two mils. So, uh, and it's just pretty flat, straight grind uh, down. So, and it's just a bevel at the end. So on something like this, you're kind of in the middle. You've got enough thickness at two mils. You've got length and you want durability. So you don't want it to be too, uh, it, you can roll it very easily. So you have to be careful about that. But depending again on your refinement, how much do you want to do? So again, finding my angle. Again, if you want to be on a micro bevel, because you just want to keep it alive. Let's say you're using it and then it's kind of dull. You want to keep it alive. You put a micro bevel on there, raise it up a little bit higher and pull it across. I wouldn't use too much pressure because now you know you're hitting that edge. I can actually feel that here. You can hear the sound it's making like a little shing too. Uh, or you can come in again and just keep it on a lower angle for more of a maintenance thing. Or you can find it right at the bank, about the angle that it should be, which is your sharpening angle, and just tickle the edge. So if I'm coming in for a micro bevel, I'll go lighter. If I'm tickling the edge for just finishing, I'll be lighter. And if I'm actually trying to maintain the edge with a strop, then I'll come in and be a little bit heavier. You can hear the difference here. Here, I'm being heavier. And I'm putting a good amount of pressure, about five pounds worth of pressure here. I want it to really push into the leather. That's more aggressive. And then at the end, I come back and tickle that edge very, very light. Again, more like a straight razor with the pinky up. And that will tickle the edge into shape. So it's a more dynamic way of, of, of stropping. Right, and lastly, we're going to do my neck knife because I can. I've got a, a D2 blade here. It's paprika knives. I'll put a link. So, uh, here again, I've, I've, well, I've sharpened this at 600 grit on a diamond. So to come straight to quarter micron in this case is not necessarily the best leap. Uh, so I've got a long way to go for it to do anything. So all it's going to be doing is polishing the grooves of the 600. It's not going to influence the edge unless I come too high and then create like a slight micro bevel and roll it over. But even then, it's more just going to round everything. It's not really going to kill it. Uh, so I could put more pressure to get into there and polish the grooves. So I've got a decent amount of pressure again. Okay, and at the end, what I'm going to do is you can feel actually before I get to the end, uh, you can feel when you're at a certain point. There's a certain change when, if you're gone too high on the angle, you'll feel it start to feel different. Uh, generally speaking, it's, it's, you'll feel something change. So if you feel that change, back it down. So here I'm going to just, at the end, I'm just going to tickle the edge again. At the, at the end, I'm just going to finish very light. So all I'm trying to do here is create almost a micro bevel and just cut down those edge of the edge, larger teeth from the 600. And that's that. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this uh, series of videos has helped you with your stropping and your stropping technique and given you some things to think about and improve upon or even question. Uh, so if you liked it, let us know. Please subscribe again and I'll put a subscribe button here and I'll put some of the other links up here and up here. And hopefully we'll see you at the next video. Thanks again.